Hi guys, if you're new here, I'm Eve Dawes and today I'm going to be doing a get ready with me. I'm going to show you my skincare, my cosmetics, my hair care, my hair tools, the must have, the total regrets and the things I kind of like but I don't think you necessarily need because I think a lot of us, it's a new year, we're all kind of like going through our beauty cabinets, having a good tidy up, throwing things away and realizing how much money we wasted on things we don't actually need, how much our makeup bags are overflowing. So I kind of wanted to share with you what I've learned over the years and um, my buying regrets, kind of how I've really narrowed it down to what I have and my absolute favorites. So I'm gonna start right at the very beginning today with my morning skincare routine. Um, I'm 42, I live in Las Vegas, so my skincare has definitely changed a lot over the years from being in my 20s, lying out in the Caribbean every day, in fact, to carrot oil and baby oil, yes, massive regrets for that now, and um, to really, really having to change to oils and super hydrating skincare and products so that they don't settle in the fine lines during the day and all the rest of it. So let's take a look at my bathroom. Okay, so let's show you what I do in the morning. I feel like my towel is giving me a bit of a facelift. My eyebrows seem to be a bit higher than normal. So at the moment, my um, skincare routine in the morning is a little different because I'm preparing for my first Fibroblast PRP Vampire Facial. I'm super excited about it, but I'm also super nervous. So if you've had it before, leave a comment below with your experience with it. So at the moment, I've taken a few products out that I would normally use. So I'm gonna cut show you my normal routine, the things I absolutely love that I must have, and the things I can kind of give or take a little bit. So the first one is obviously a cleanser. I use Edible Beauty. I got into these I want to say it's almost 18 months ago I discovered Edible Beauty. It's an Australian company and it's called Edible Beauty because they're so clean. They actually say like it's actually edible because there's no toxins in there. They're pregnancy safe, they're vegan, they're cruelty free. They have a whole range and they just kind of started doing internal beauty things as well like your collagen, things for your nails, for glowing skin. So this is what I use as my cleanser. I am an affiliate with Edible Beauty and I have been gifted these products, but I've been using them for 18 months and I absolutely swear by them. I really, really like them. Sometimes when you think clean, you don't always think you're gonna get the most um, efficient products, like the most, I'm trying to think of a way of phrasing this. They're the strongest ingredients that are gonna do the most for you, but I actually find them really, really good. They say like, it's nature's medicine cabinet, right? Everything we have is actually in nature and I really, really think that they even have a retinol alternative which i really like i can't use it right now because of the prp coming up but so i would normally use i like a really thick cleanser because i live in the desert so it's super super drying i always have a humidifier going i sleep with it i have it going all day because also it helps my hair not be so far away so i'll link the humidifier as well if you live somewhere in a dry climate so I actually spoke with the founder of this. She actually did my prescription skincare for me. And one of the things she said was, with the cleanser, to put it on a dry face, work it in, and then add water, kind of massage it a bit more, and then rinse it off. So in the morning, I just single cleanse. I don't bother about the whole double cleanse thing. You're not really taking much off. Um, I do have a Freo Luna, but I only use this in the nighttime. And that's a product that I could live without, honestly. I love it. It's good if I've got a ton of makeup on. I'll show you my nighttime routine later. I'm going to do a whole, like, get ready with me. And I'm ready with me today, I guess, for my skincare and my hair and my makeup and everything. So the cleanser is obviously something I, is my must-have. Luna kind of can give or take. The second thing I use is a serum. At the moment I'm using May Love, it's the Glow Maker. The reason I'm using this is it is a brightening serum. So whilst I'm not um, tanning, I find it really, I use a lot of self tanner. If you know follow me on Instagram, I'm always, always tan. I use self tanner, I don't real tan. I'm using this right now because normally I find it takes my self tanner off and because I can't self tan right now, I'm able to use all my brightening products except for retinols, glycolics, any facial acids, retin-A you can't use before the treatment. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. So I'm just using a serum. The serum I use changes a lot throughout the year. I'll go through kind of like the calming ones. If I've just had a peel, I'll do the brightening ones when I'm not tanning. I kind of don't have a serum that's my go-to, but like I said, at the moment I'm using May Love and I'm also using their nighttime oil. I really, really like this company. Again, it is cruelty-free, so I love that. 
If I'm using a retinol, I use the Beauty Reset Drops. They're a retinol alternative with this. I kind of put two to three drops of this in with this, mix it, good. And I do the same thing at night. So this basically works like a retinol, but if you have a retinol sensitivity or you're pregnant, you could use this instead. After I've done that, this is another product I could live without. So serum for me is a must have. Number two is a toning mist. If I'm gifted one, I'm gonna use it. It's fun, they smell good. But again, it's an extra step I feel like is a non-essential. But if you're interested in that one, it is number two for Edible Beauty. It smells amazing. It's really citrusy. So if you're one of these two cup of coffees in the morning kind of people, you'll probably really enjoy this because it does kind of like pick you up and it's also good as a refresher throughout the day. I'm sorry if I start talking really quickly. I get really excited about skincare. I really, really enjoy it. Um, I was brought up, my sister was a beautician. She's 11 years older than me and she had her own beauty salon. So I was always her guinea pig for my 11. She was doing all of her facials on me, like demonstrating different products on me. So I got into beauty really, really early. The same with makeup. I was dancing in ballet companies at 11. So I was having to do full face by 11, including eyelashes, winged eyeliner, all the rest of it. So I've always, always loved makeup and had to like know how to do it. All the girls used to help me out, the older girls showing me how to do my eyeliner and my lashes. So that's always been really, really fun. Um, what else? Okay, so we just did the toner. I like this if you're if you've got really really dry skin. I use number four. It's a vanilla silk hydrating lotion from Edible Beauty as well. I do like. I do change skincare a lot. I get a lot of products sent to me so I can try them, but I try and do the whole collection together rather than using a cleanser from one company, a serum from one, a toner from another. I try and keep to a one brand as much as possible because most of them are obviously designed to work together. This is what I use when my skin is really dry because it kind of it's a blend of a lot of like, I think cocoa butter is the number one ingredient in this and coconut oil. So it's very, very rich. Like you'll see when it comes out, it's incredibly thick. And I personally find it a little hard to blend if I'm just using this on its own. So I tend to drop a like just one or two drops of oil in there because I don't want my makeup to slide again this is you can see how much i've used this one it is well loved again this is may love it's love 31 precious face oil this smells amazing as well i'm all about the scents and smells and that one is just incredible okay so i've got it nice and thin so i'm not dragging my skin too much so normally with my moisturizer i use Tan Lux, the face in medium dark every other day or every day if I'm on vacation because I like to look really dark on vacation, especially if I'm shooting bikinis. Um, I use a medium dark and not the light medium, even though I'm super, super pale because I just feel the light medium doesn't do anything and I like to actually be darker. I think from working in the Caribbean for five years, I'm used to having that when I was actually tanning having that really tan look. And I just feel like if I'm wearing beige or white or cream, I look really washed out without that, with a blonde hair and pretty much no eyebrows or lashes. It's just, it looks too fair. And I don't wear makeup every day to be fair, so I do like to have a good tan on. It is cruelty-free and vegan. That's why I use Tan Lux. But obviously I'm not using it right now because I can't tan before the PRP. So this is completely changing my entire routine and my life. So normally every other morning I would use this with my face moisturizer. And then I would use the body, again, medium dark, just with some, literally with some Palmer's cocoa butter to moisturize. And what I really like about that is I can be a bit lazy and forget to moisturize my body. And that makes me consistent and do it at least every other day. And it's such a rich lotion that it works. It doesn't work if you use it with oil, it's just gonna slide, your color's gonna end up all smeared. So definitely use it with kind of a thicker moisturizer. I really, really like that, and especially because um, Tanning, self tanners can be a bit drying anyway, so using a cocoa butter is gonna really help hydrate and offset that. So normally that would be in my daily routine as well. And I would definitely say the face and the body are two must-haves for me. They're non-negotiables. I've tried other ones. I've tried Isle of Paradise. I've tried Saint-Tropez. I always come back to these two. I just really, really like them. I've also tried the different variations in there. They've got kind of like the, I think it's hyaluronic serum and anti-aging ones. But honestly, I find the, I mean, they say anti-age. These ones are the best in my opinion. <laughs>
And then I use, it's another Edible Beauty product. It is their Gold Flake Eye Cream, a Gold Rush Eye Cream. What's cool about it, okay, this is well loved as well. It has actual gold flakes in there. So when it comes, it actually has gold flakes on the top for decoration. The only downside is with pots, I feel like a lot gets goes to waste because it gets under your finger now. My husband, if I run out and I use his, it's like, where do my like, eye cream go? Because you get through it so much faster. So if you have, this is a little tip, if you have a face mask that comes, you know with that plastic spatula, use that instead of your finger to get it out and it will last longer because you're not wasting it under your finger. And this one again, super, super hydrating. You do kind of have to work it in quite well so you don't have gold flakes left over on your face. And um, I tend to go right down to here because I've been getting fine lines. That's nice. I've got eyeliner still left over from yesterday. It must have been a good night. Um, I go right down onto my cheeks because this is where I'm finding my highlighter settled into the fine lines there. And I look really old and really tired and it's not a good look. So this eye cream I find really, really helps, super hydrating, and my makeup doesn't slide with it, which is another key factor. So this is a can't live without for sure. So the last product I want to show you is my number one pick. It is literally my holy grail of skincare. It's cruelty free, obviously. I talked about it a lot on the blog and on Instagram last year. Because if I only have one product, this would be it. It's such a multitasker, and it is super goop, Glow Screen SPF 40. So I wear SPF year round, like I'm in Vegas. It's really sunny and even on cloudy days, you're still getting SPF exposure. I don't suntan and I really, really like this for many reasons. Oh, it's also reef safe. So if you're going diving or snorkeling, you can wear this as well. So, and it's vegan. So I get through so many of these. I actually had to run out to the store this morning and get a new one because I'd run out. You actually don't need as much as I used, but I just wanted you to be able to see it. It has a really nice glow. Now in saying that, I thought, got all excited when I saw the glow screen for the body. I was like, oh yes, that's amazing. I love the one for the face. It was horrible. <laughs> Sorry, but it's super goop. It looked like, I know I'm in Vegas, but it looked like I'd been at a glitter factory. It was so, so shimmery. I was like, okay, no, that's not for me. It actually had like glitter flakes in it. It was too, too much, unless that's the look you're going for. Um, so I'm not gonna use all of this. You're, I'm gonna do half my face so you can literally see the difference it makes. And I'm not, be careful you don't get it in your eyes because it does have SPF in and I find that that tends to make my eyes sting. Let's do a nice little line right down the middle. <laughs> so this is actually a universal color. It suits everyone and what it does is it also acts as a primer, not just an SPF. So it gives you, if you were doing like a non-makeup day, it just gives you that really nice, healthy glow. And it does kind of, do you see how it's like, I still look a little bit red there because I'm not tanning right now. So it's just my skin and it's very translucent. It does take out a lot of kind of, God, I'm going to get really close here with you guys. Um, it takes out a lot of that uneven skin tone and just smooths it out. So if I was doing a non-makeup day, I could literally throw this on a mascara and clear gloss like to hydrate and I would be done. So this is why I'm saying if I only have one thing, it would be this because it does work as a primer and a sunscreen. And if my skin isn't dry, I will skip the lotion and just use this because it's super hydrating anyway. So let's finish the other side. And it does absorb pretty quickly. I just used way too much. Got all excited, my new tube. And then obviously if you wanna take it down into your neck or decolletage as well, you can totally do that. So that is literally my love it, can't live without it product out of all my morning skincare. And then I finished off a shameless plug because I do have my own cosmetics company. So I do kind of know what I'm talking about when I come to this and formulas. It's cruelty free and vegan. And this one's in Walmart. I'm gonna link everything below and share it on the blog as well. So this is well loved. It is the Doors Cosmetics Lip Plumping Hydrating Treatment and it works as a mask so you can sleep in it as well. And it goes on clear and non-sticky. So I love that about it. If you wanna throw it over a matte lipstick to turn it into a lip gloss, you can do that as well. It's minty and I find it helps my 
lip filler lasts longer. I was trying to get my words out there. My lip filler lasts longer because it does have peptides that encourage collagen production. So it really, really does create that appearance of fuller lips without the burn. A lot of lip plumpers have that burning and then you kiss your husband and then what have you got on your lips? This is actually really nice. It doesn't have that burn or tingle whatsoever. So I just throw that on and I sleep in it. So it'll be part of my nighttime routine. Normally I keep all of my products in my makeup cabinet, not on the side, I'm reaching around. But I try to, I always like in the new year to kind of take everything out of the medicine cabinet, clean it, get a, get a good scrub, throw out all the products that have expired and kind of line everything up, get organized and start again. But my husband's not home today and I did that and now I can't get the shelves back in. So we're not doing that at the moment. Everything's just a mess on the side, which is why the camera is this high and this close because you do not want to see this whole mess that's going on right now. Okay, let's get the hair dried and done because what I like to do is get my hair dried first before I do my makeup. So I do my makeup and then do the hair dryer if I get red, I start sweating. I feel like if I do the hair, I can let it then cool and set. And then when it's I've done my makeup, my hair's cold enough to start kind of working out the, the curls and dealing with it afterwards. Okay, so on to the hair. So for my shampoo and conditioner, I'm not really that fussy as long as it's cruelty free and hydrating. Right now I'm using Living Proof Zero Frizz because my hair's been getting a little bit frizzy and fly away in the winter when it's a lot drier, even with a humidifier. Um, and then every other wash, every third wash, I'll use Olaplex number five. This is a must have for me, sometimes with the shampoo as well, but I do find this helps my hair grow because it helps prevent it snapping. It really helps repair those bonds. You just don't want to use it too often because it can make the hair too brittle and then it snaps. So it's kind of finding a balance for you. I'm not using a leave-in, um, a deep conditioning mask right now because I have tape-ins and obviously that it's not good for the tape or kind of make it all slide out. I do use, I discovered this in 2014 doing pageants. One of my hairdressers was using this. It's really good for detangling. It's a seven second detangler because as you can see, my hair is naturally curly, so it tangles really, really easily. Um, so I just use this really, really liberally. Liberally, you can get that word out. And then again, this is another must have. If you don't have a tangle teaser in your life, you're doing it all wrong because this thing is a game changer. And then the other thing I like to use is the Olaplex number seven. It's the oil and again, just in the ends. And this is the size it comes, but it's great for traveling with. And this helps as well. If you have flyaways in the winter or any dryness in the end, that really helps. I'm going a little heavy handed with it because I have a lot of hair right now. Okay, so that's what I use um, as my products for every day. Like I said, some are must haves, some are kind of you know, I can live without, like my shampoo and conditioner, I really don't, I can switch between. I'm not in love with Living Proof. Um, I've used a lot of different brands. And then, but this, Tangle Teaser, for me, like when I say like a non-negotiable must have, it's things that I travel with, like I couldn't leave the house with. Do you know what I mean? If I'm going away on vacation, it comes with me. So I always take my own shampoo and conditioner just because I feel like hotels don't always have the best products and I don't know if it's gonna work for my hair. It's normally like when you go away, it's like thickening shampoo and conditioner in the hotels, but that is the last thing I need on my hair. The other thing, and I travel everywhere with this, I'm not gonna do a whole blow dry your hair section because I'm gonna bore you, um, but I do have um, a review of both the Dyson Air Wrap and the new Flyaway attachment. So if you're really interested in those, I have a whole different YouTube videos on them. I'll link them all in the comments below, but it just keeps this more concise. This number one, these toss up. I would say this, because I travel with this. Even if I'm doing a carry on, I put this in it. I would rather take this than a pair of shoes because it cuts down my blow drying time so much. And I can't use um, hotel hair dryers. I would be there all day, even with this. I like to let my hair dry for about an hour, get it really, really kind of like 70, 80% dry and then finish with this and it still takes 20 minutes. And um, just because I have so much hair, but any other hair dryer, it's like 40 minutes. So honestly, this is amazing. I'm gonna start drying my hair in a little bit, let's try it a bit more. And I'll kind of show you like half with it done, half without, like, cause my hair dries pretty crazy. And um, even if I keep brushing it whilst it's drying, so I'll show you that. So the other thing I just got from Dyson is the flyaway attachment. I'm not going to talk about it much because I've got a whole different review on that. 
but this I could live without. I mean, it's good if you're trying to cut down on your straightening iron time and try not to fry your hair. If you've got pretty manageable hair, this will probably be amazing for you and you'll probably ditch the iron. For me, I still need to iron the ends, so I could totally live without this, but um, that's just for me. The other thing that is a must for me is obviously the round brush for blow drying, get the tension on nice and tight, either the ball bristles or something ceramic. A good old just regular hairbrush to get through all the knots and brush it during the day. And then when it comes to ball bristle brushes, that was a bit of a tongue twister. I did buy the Mason Pearson, but I also have just a regular one. I think I got it off of Amazon or Ultra or something like that. I actually prefer the cheap one. This I thought, oh, this is gonna be amazing. I remember like brushing my hair with my dad's growing up. And I was like, I thought it would be worth the money and you hear really good things about it. This for me was, I like it, I don't love it. I kind of wish I hadn't spent the money on it when this works just as well. If I'm doing a sleek bun, this doesn't, just doesn't cut it. I can't get it sleek enough. I have to go in with this. And then just a toothbrush that I can just go in and use to kind of just with hairspray, just to get down all the little fake flyaways. And then I would say the fourth thing is obviously a tail comb to get that really nice center part or side part. It just really, really helps with that. So they're the four brushes I would say are must haves plus your tangle teaser. All right, I'm gonna go and let this dry, dry it, and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so this is halfway through drying the hair with a Dyson, just blow drying. I haven't like ironed it or anything, but you get it really sleek with it. And then this is the side I'm gonna go finish up. Okay, so now that it's fully dry, I can get on to heat styling it. I don't need a heat protection spray because the Olaplex number seven bonding oil protects your hair up to 450 degrees. So that's one less product you need. I'm all about, I have, in the past, so many hair products, and like every time I open the cabinets underneath my sink, everything's falling out. So really, really trying to condense. The only other two things I would use now is I have Pantene, Pantene, however you want to say it, misbehaving spray. This isn't a dry shampoo. It helps with flyaway hair. So if you put it in your roots, it's gonna make it greasy. Just kind of put it through the ends, and that will really help it like going crazy when you start heat styling. And then I like powder dry shampoo. So the one I have is Ambience, Ambience, however you want to say it. It comes in different colors. So it's also a good root tip touch up, but then I'll take this on vacation with me as well. Like, you know, second day hair and just rub it in and you don't have to worry about washing it every day. So they're the two products I would use instead of hairspray. I'm trying to avoid hairspray just because I find the alcohol really, really drying on it. So let's start it and then let's do something with my face. I'm just going to do a quick curl today with the curling iron and then let it set whilst I'm doing my makeup. The one I'm using is a GHD curling iron. I do think GHD is worth the investment. I really, really like this and I've had it years. Okay, so I have my crazy sausage curls going. I kind of like to leave it really, really tight curls and let it cool down and so I kind of do its thing whilst I'm doing my makeup and then I'll fluff it all up at the end. So I'm not going to do like a makeup tutorial, I'm not a makeup artist, but I'm going to kind of show you like the things I have, like a must has. I have so much makeup. I feel like we probably waste so much money on makeup, don't we? Because we want to try everything. And it is something that I do keep changing. If, if a makeup artist is using a new foundation on me and I fall in love with it, I'll switch. But once I find a product, I do kind of tend to stick to it for a while. So um, I threw this on already, the glow screen, which I did in the skincare. Then this was another favorite find. I really, really like this. It's Prep Set Anglo. So it's by Iconic London. Again, it's cruelty free. What's cool about it is it's really golden. So if you're going for that glowy, dewy look, it's absolutely perfect. It's gorgeous on top of like a self tan in the summer as well. So if I'm going for like a dewy look, I'll use this. I'll need a bit of a perk and then it'll pet me up in the morning. It smells really good as well. I'll put that on first so that it just like gives my skin. It doesn't drag the makeup as much if I'm feeling a little bit dehydrated. So this for me is absolutely a must have because if I'm traveling, I'm trying to condense everything. So the fact I can use it as a primer and a setting spray, I really, really like, but you do want to shake it first. Otherwise you're going to end up with clumps everywhere. Next thing, these make a big difference. If you're not using a beauty blender, total game changer because it does totally change how your makeup goes on. You're gonna use some damps, so you wanna get them nice and wet, squeeze them out, and then just throw on your foundation. Right now, I am using Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation, and I use number five when I'm white like this, and then number 6.5 when I have a tan, so I'm gonna go in with a five today. It's a really nice medium to full coverage that you can build up the body with, so for me, because my skin tone feels quite uneven, 
Foundations are non-negotiable and I like the Charlotte Tilbury, it's cruelty free. And then the Tarte Shape Tape. I've tried so many concealers because I find they settle in the creases as the day go on. The same with like powder highlighters. The Shape Tape I find does that the least for me and I actually go quite light with it. I'm using 12N Fair Neutral. I really, really like kind of that lit from within, prior wide awake look, especially as my eyes are a bit hooded. So these two are my go-tos as well, definite must have. So I'll whack these on, and if I say, think of anything to talk about whilst I'm doing it, I will, otherwise I'll fast forward it. So you're not watching me do my full makeup in real time. So there are two other things I will use that I would say aren't must-haves, but that I like. One is the Seeker Pair. It's green, you can see how much I like this because it's pretty empty. So it's just that color correction if you're feeling red. So if you've done a glycolic, you've been using facial acids, done a peel, it does help kind of offset that redness. So I like, it's not a must have. And the other thing I like, it isn't a must have, but if you want more heavy coverage, like that really flawless skin, say you're going to an event or you're doing photos, for your Instagram, whatever you're doing, the Era Everyday Foundation is the one I use. It's an airbrush. Discovered this in New York, a makeup artist used it on me. And she said the tip was, you wanna spray it in your hand first, not on your face, because it's gonna come out too heavy and harder to work with. You spray it there, then use your beauty blender and then dab it on. That works really, really well. It gives really, really heavy coverage and it's really matte. So if you're going for a matte look, this is really lovely. But again, it's definitely not an essential. I go pretty low with my concealer because if I go too high to the eye, I find it creases more. And I also want that kind of like, kind of highlighted almost down to where then my highlighter starts. Okay, after I've done that, I do like to let it dry a tiny bit before setting it. Um, I learned that from Mario watching one of his makeup classes because if you do it when it's wet, it actually kind of sticks and makes it stick in the creases even more. Let it dry a little bit and then bake it if you like baking. I really like baking. So whilst I'm waiting for that, I really like Kat Von D. It's the shade and light palette. This is how much I like it. Um, I just find it works really well for creating a base. And if I want to do a matte eye, this is a really good neutral palette for this. A lot of the colors, you, when you buy palettes, they seem like a really great idea. And then you end up using two colors and like the other 20 go to waste. So I really try and cut down on my eyeshadow palettes. Like I like this one, I'll get into that in a minute. But I just tend to go smaller rather than buying the mass makeup palettes anymore because they take up so much room and I feel like they're just not being a waste of money. However much fun they seem at the time. So for me, I would say a, a eyeshadow primer or an, like a nice neutral skin colored kind of eyeshadow is a must have for me because my eyelids are quite translucent and veiny. So I like to just have like an even cover to start with so that I can really kind of like build up the color on a good canvas. It's a bit like a painting, right? You're not gonna do it on a paper bag. You want that really nice foundation to start with. Okay, now I'm gonna set my eyes. Again, this makeup brush I love. It's number 25 by Kat Von D, it's vegan. Um, it's super, super soft, but it's not only good for kind of baking under the eyes, I use it afterwards to go in and clean up and brush everything out. And it's just one of those really, those brushes I feel like you need in your brush collection. I have loads of brushes, <laughs> just a few. Um, but I'll kind of go through the ones I think you need versus the ones I kind of like get sat in the back and never used. So I've been using the Fake Bake Bronzer for, I met them again, 2017 at a East Coast Oscar viewing party and they had a gifting suite and they had Fake Bake and this is one of the products gifted to us and I've been using it ever since because I don't really use it as a bronzer, I use it to contour. It is a little shimmery but not a lot it's quite highly pigmented but it blends so easily and it doesn't crease so that's what i love about it um fan brush i really like if you like to contour here i would say a fan brush is a must if you don't probably don't need to bother with it and then i'm going to go in afterwards with this one if you contour i like this for here more than this because i feel like i can be more accurate with it and then the third one i use with the fake bake is this teeny little guy to go along my nose to really get in there. If you're not contouring, probably don't need this one either. So I would say, if you like to contour like I do, or three, if you're only gonna do contour in here, probably just get away with this one. And the reason I do my forehead is, you wanna kind of play with contour to shape your face. And because I have quite a big forehead, I like to kind of make it look a little bit smaller and work with what I can. 
And then because I'm older, I don't go too low with the contour. It looks, if I go down here, do you see where it's naturally already shadowed? I look like it just looks too gaunt. So I literally just work with that and get right into the hairline. And I'm obviously gonna blend it a lot more later when I've got more products on there to blend them all together. And then I do like, so I don't have two tiger stripes down my nose, just to really blend that in afterwards, just buff over that. I don't wash the foundation off straight away. So the leftover foundation, I just buff again over the top of that so I don't have two massive lines there. So I will say, I do think you need two of these, one for your damp foundation and one for your concealer and keep them separate. So you're not kind of smearing colors around, you really keep those colors nice and separate. And then I do use their Beauty um, Cleanser just to clean them, as well as swapping them out as often as I remember to. I'm really bad about using them forever. That's why they end up this color instead of this color, even when they're cleaned. But um, yeah, this is really good to have. It's not a must have. You could probably just do it with your shampoo or face, facial cleanser or whatever you have to hand, because you're gonna rinse it all out properly anyway. But this is what they have that you're supposed to clean it with. My eyelashes have been getting longer because I've been using Grande Lash. Um, on them, which I find really, really works, but it does make my eyes bloodshot in the morning. So I didn't use it last night because I didn't want to have bloodshot eyes during this with you. Um, I'm using the Shurumara eyelash curler. It's lasted me years. I've tried the heated ones. I really don't find they work any better and they're more expensive and they break. So I would say just a good old fashioned eyelash curler is probably the way to go. Okay. Eyebrows. I like to do my brows before my eyeshadow personally because I feel like it gives me a good template and shape. So I have two. I use a good old fat one to get in there and really create a lot of um, fill. And then I'll do this right on the outside to really extend that line and then in the middle just to try and draw, draw a few fine lines in. So I would say I, because I've got, even though they're microbladed, they're pretty fair, especially once I get the um, foundation on the top of them and all the rest of it, I like to use these. The things I found I wasted my money on are the gels because I feel like they stay in place anyway. And the tinted ones just don't cut it for me. I still got to do the pencil, so I feel like they were a waste of money. If you've got great bushy brows and dark brows, gel's probably the way to go. But for me, these were kind of a bit of a waste of money. So I'm gonna stick with the pencil. So the first one I'm using is the Goof Proof Brow Pencil by Benefit, and that's number two. It's actually quite dark, but um, I kind of get nervous about brows as a blonde that they go ginger. And then I'm using Torp by Charlotte Tilbury in this, and they both have their little spoolie on the end as well. So you can get a good brush out at the end. And obviously you're gonna want a pair of tweezers and an eye pencil sharpener in your makeup kit as well. They're gonna be must haves. Okay, so now I've got the framework for the eyeshadow. It's a lot easier to go in. So now I'm just using, I've been using this palette, as you can see, it's well loved again. Um, I've been using this because it's easy to travel and sticking to the same four colors and I'm really trying to minimal, minimalize how much I'm toting around with me. I have in my makeup bag and spending and wasting on makeup. So I'm really just trying to find my colors, what works, and then having like a couple of odd colors here and there just if I want to change up my makeup. So the lightest little shimmery one is just going to go everywhere right up under that brow bone. I do go back in with this at the end and go into the brow bone and into the corners if I need to have some, if I have some fallout, I wanna make that pop. Then I'm gonna go in with this one, kind of do a little color wash, blend it really well, quite high up on the upper lid. I'm gonna go in the creases with this one, and then this one, it was really disappointing, on the website, they've got their finger in there, and they're like pushing it on, it looks all shimmery and almost like a wet look. It doesn't do that. Honestly, it does not do that. I've tried it, I've tried it wet, I've tried it dry, it doesn't, it's just another dark eyeshadow, and it's not even that shimmery. So that was kind of disappointing, but I do like these colors for fall, so I'm gonna try and find some different colors coming into spring that aren't quite so warm. Okay, now this palette was designed to be a highlighter. Um, you use your body, you can use it on your cheeks, wherever you wanna highlight. I don't like powder highlighters on my cheek because they settle too much, but I didn't want it to go to waste, so I've been using it right there. So it just really creates a little pop right in the center. And then I've also been using it to go down the middle, and right there. So again, this isn't a must have, it's a like it. I really like it, I use it every day, but if you're keeping your makeup more simple and you aren't worried about that extra step, don't even worry about it. Um, it does look really nice if you use this in though and get it in the shoulders and across your collarbones. It does look really nice in the summer, I have to say. 
I used one for the all over color, this for the darker colors and the crease, this for the pop, and there's one more brush I use, which is this one, which I use when I've got the eyeliner to smudge it. I would say a smudge stick is a essential because otherwise you end up with those really harsh kind of lines rather than getting a really nice smoked eye, and I love that smoky look. Um, now's when I go back in as well and start cleaning up underneath so I can get that really nice line and smoke at the side just clean everything up I tend to do my blush and highlighter almost last just because I don't want my eyeshadows to fall out over and create a whole mess so I try and do as little below that as possible that's easy to clear up I kind of do this and then I tend to finish with my eyeliner unless I'm doing um, a liquid or I'm using lashes I'm not sure if I'm going to do lashes today or not um, and I've gone on to liquids I saw um, her Instagram is in the fro Victoria use Lumine Lumen I'm not quite sure how you say it, it is cruelty free and they blend really really well they're very pigmented and I find they don't crease so that's really nice. The color of this one is Pink Blossom for the blush and then Midnight Sun for the highlight. A little goes a long way. I've had these 18 months, I wanna say, because I got them like during lockdown to play around with. Um, and the pink's just a really pretty color. It works when I'm tanned, it works when I'm white. The only thing I would say, there's different application techniques. I like to work with them really quickly while they're wet. Once they're dry, they do not budge. So that's my tip for them. I use them together. I put the blush on, put the highlighter on really quickly, and then I blend it all together so it's not three lines and a Aunt Sally rosy cheek. So literally that's how much I'm using. I'm gonna start. It doesn't have to be that neat because I'm gonna go in with a brush. You just wanna get that color laid down tiny bit of highlighter like literally really tiny because that stuff otherwise it's just a giant streak across your face i use three brushes now so i'm going to use this right here for that one then i'm going to use this to get everything up into that color from the contour and then i'm just going to finish with that to sweep that all in so it's not three <laughs> massive lines and if you find it got too blended and you lost some of the color, you can always go back in and just touch that up as well. So just keep playing with it until you get it how you want it. So I would say definitely need a blusher brush. That's gotta be in your makeup kit as well. Okay, we're almost there. We just need some liner and some mascara and lips. So again, I'm using a few different liners. So one, I would say skip it is the nude one that goes in the waterline. Honestly, it just annoys my eyes. So unless you have really small eyes or really red inner eyes, I think this is totally, you can leave that. Ditch that, save your money. And I, instead, I use these three. So I like using, this is a new one I just picked up. I get really irritated eyes. And this one is one size, it's fragrance free and it's cruelty free. So it hasn't been irritating my eyes. It really smudges. So you wanna be careful with this one and really smudge it. You're not gonna get a crisp line with it. And then the other one I use a lot is Charlotte Tilbury. I collaborated a lot with her last year. So I got to try a lot of her products. And this one is the Color Comedian. It's golden quartz. So it's specifically for hazel eyes. So what's cool with these pencils is they're designed for your eye color to make your eye color pop more. Um, and they just, they're really chunky. So you can either use them all over your eye and smudge it as an eyeshadow or you can use it as a liner and it blends out really nicely and um, you have to work with it quite quickly because once it's dry it's not going to smudge as much so don't worry about it smudging once you're wearing it in the day it does set once it's there and then the other one i really like is urban decay and i use demolition there was another one i was using as well bourbon which is kind of sparkly shimmery bronze but this just is really nice dark brown it's just a little bit softer so that i can kind of really soften down that black so it's not just like Panda eyes. And then if I'm doing a winged eyeliner, the one I like to use is Kat Von D Dagger. And um, it's just got a really cool tip on it that you can get a really nice, sharp wing on it. I tend not to, because of the shape of my eyes now, they're getting hooded. I tend not to go the, all the way across now. I tend to literally put my lashes on first and then start at the outside and almost go straight across and then kind of blend it in. So it's almost like a, a, tr a triangle. So. I'm just gonna do that quickly. So I do tight line my upper lashes from the inside because if you're doing eyelashes, it just creates that really nice seamless fold. You don't see that white bit of skin and then the lashes. 
and this pencil is super soft to be able to do it with. It's not scratching my eyes. And then I'm just gonna go in with the Color Chameleon underneath and blend that black out. And I've undecided if I'm gonna do lashes or not today. So all I do is a tiny little line across the top of that demolition, just tiny, tiny. So those are my three eyeliners I love, plus the one liquid. Okay, this for me, eyelash primer is a must have. If you have short or fine lashes or fair lashes, I would say that using a lash primer makes a huge difference. Um, I'm using Tarte and um, it looks white and it goes on white. It's gonna create like a lot of volume and length for you. And then that way, when you put your mascara on, your eyelashes just gonna look so much longer. And then I've used on this eye, I'm using Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes. This I was gifted by them, but um, I really, really like it. I felt like it really works well with that lash primer. And then lastly, as much as I love my big fluffy powder brush, I do like using little one because I feel I get a lot more precise. I can get right in those nooks and crannies and really powder down to finish with. And the powder I'm using is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Powder. It's under eye and face, which is why I used it for the under eye. That way, again, I'm not using like a setting baking powder for under eye. I'm not using a powder for the face. Really, really trying to condense the products I have. So this is definitely a must have. And then it's up to you. I like having both. I mean, this is just easy, isn't it? To quickly grab out your bag and go. But then you end up messing up your eyebrows. This one I just feel is so much more precise and it fits in your purse better. And then once everything's dry, especially mascara, I'll just finish with the setting spray. And then I'll add lipstick and that is it, I'm done. I'm gonna do a little cheat sheet on the blog of like everything I talked about in the beauty products and cosmetics, like my must haves versus the things I've wasted money on and regret buying versus the things I just like to have around. Okay, and then for the lip liner and lips, full disclosure here, I do have a cosmetic company um, that does, it specializes in lipsticks and liners. So I'm gonna use its retractable lip liner. Again, I like this because it doesn't need sharpening all the time, it's self-sharpening. And this color is mauve. It's a really good neutral color you can wear with all your nudes, pinks, browns, and um, twigs, another good neutral color I have. And then Valentine is the one for the reds. Again, so I try not to do like a million different lip liners. You don't need them. Just have like two, like one neutral, one red, um, and you're good to go. I mean, if you have, if you like doing a bright pink lipstick, you might want a pink liner, but really trying to minimize the products I have and that you're spending money on. And then the lip gloss that I use is called Bora Bora. I called it that because I created it for our 10 year wedding anniversary in Bora Bora. So it always reminds me of our anniversary now. And it's just a really good universal flattering nude and it's got blue undertones so it makes your teeth look whiter. Okay, now I'm gonna figure out if I'm gonna do lashes or not. If I'm doing magnetic lashes, I love the Lash Loving You. It was gifted these, but they make putting lashes on so easy. I bought them off Amazon before and they were terrible. They were too heavy and the magnets just fell off. So I feel like magnetic lashes are so hit and miss. So I'll drop a discount code in the caption of this as well in case you wanna check those out. And then if I was doing stick-ons, I just use the one piece. I use Duo um, Glue, the brush on glue. Honestly, I've tried so many different glues and um, I always come back to Duo. I've been using it since I was 11 on the stage, sticking eyelashes on with the ballerina. So I know that that glue works okay so let's go finish off the hair because it's already starting to fall we're losing those sausage curls let's go add some volume okay so the last thing i would do with my hair if i'm feeling a bit rooty or if i want to build volume in the roots i really like ambience dry shampoo because it's tinted they do it for a different color hair so if you're in between kind of colors it's a really really good go-to and it does kind of add a bit of volume and color and i would literally just you can see it coming out quite fast and then just kind of give it a quick little boost. If I find I'm getting flyaway hair and static, I'll use the misbehaving dry mist, conditioning mist, just on the ends, because otherwise it's kind of, because it's conditioning, it's a bit heavy. <coughs> I'm just gonna choke on the fumes there. It's also quite fumy. Is that a word? Fumy, it's a new word. So that's really good for preventing frizz. And then I'm literally just gonna do the flip. Shake it out the fingers a little bit, pretty much done. I'll probably kind of style that a little bit, tuck it behind the ears or something. And that is the hair. So I feel like hair tools are one of those things that can get really expensive and be really overwhelming as well. So you know I love my Dyson hair dryer, the flyaway attachment, not so much, but I'm keeping it because it's still good. And um, the other thing I like that GHD curling iron I showed you that I did my hair with, if I want to do a wave, 
these are awesome and um, it's not a must have but if you prefer if you want more of a curl i would use the curling iron that i did if you want more of that beachy wave go for this and honestly one that's under 20 bucks from the drugstore works just as well as the expensive ones so save yourself some money there Mine's a Remington cheap and cheerful. I think it's like $17 on Amazon. That is amazing. And then a hair straightener. I really like a center part, blunt cut, really, really straight hair. And I have to say, when you're spending money, this and your hair dryer is where you should spend it because if you get a crappy straightening iron, it's gonna fry your hair. Uh, so I really like GHDs. Um, I like anything really, if it's ceramic, you're gonna be okay. But honestly, the more you can afford to spend on these, I do think it's money well spent if you're trying to keep your hair in good condition. And then lastly, this, the Dyson Air Wrap. Okay, so I'm gonna let you watch the review of this because there's too much to tell you. It is definitely not a must have. I'm not saying I have regrets buying it. I kind of do actually, because it's a lot of money to spend on it and I don't use it as much as I should because it takes so long. It takes like 40 minutes because it dries and curls your hair. You have to wait for your hair to be like 78, 80% dry and then you finish with this. So it's drying and it's curling and it just takes forever. And because my hair is naturally kind of curly, you saw what crazy mess it was earlier. It just doesn't really do much for me. It ends up just being really kind of, I have to like blow dry it at the top to straighten it and then I have to curl it and then I have to like, play with it because it just a lot of time it just makes it very voluminous rather than curly and there's not much of a wave at the end of the day so i would definitely say if you've got really manageable hair and it's naturally holds a nice curl and it doesn't frizz you're gonna love this if you have less manageable hair it's probably honestly a waste of money except for the fact that it does less heat damage obviously it's still doing heat damage it's heat but it's not like putting an iron straight on your hair i mean it's hot air versus actual direct iron heat. Okay, now that I've shown you how I put everything on from my skincare to my makeup to my hair, let's turn around, I didn't put on my hair, but I styled my hair. Let's um, take it all off and I'll kind of show you what I do for my nighttime routine really quickly. Okay, because my morning and my evening routine are so similar, I'm just going to show you a couple of products that are different to everything else. So this is why I love magnetic lashes because you can just pull them off. I haven't got any glue residue. So I use pretty much the same products AM, PM. The difference is I would often double cleanse in the evening if I've had a lot of makeup on. So what I would do is I don't like using the Luna on makeup straight away. I feel like it just smudges it everywhere. So instead I like to kind of wash it off once and then for the second cleanse, I'll use this to really deep cleanse and get all the dirt out of the pores. And then the other device I love from Ferreo is the UFO. This is one of my must haves, honestly. I prefer it if I had to choose between the two. I'd be the UFO every time because it's a really cool facial device you can do at home and it takes 90 seconds like versus yes it's great to go to the spa but I don't have time to go to the spa and spend money all the time and have a 90 minute facial it's dead easy and at night I love their call it a night mask and if I'm dehydrated in the morning I'll do a make my day it's like hyaluronic acid so I find that really really helpful at pumping up the skin and hydrating so those are my two favorite masks for the ufo and that's dead quick before bed um, and then what i'll do it depends i have two from edible beauty they're both gifted and um, i use a cocoa one when my skin is hydrating and then i use a purifying one when i feel like i need i've got like a pimple at this time of the month the good thing with the sleeping beauty one though it's still although it's got like clay in to kind of purify your skin it's got a lot of hydrating ingredients so it's not like one of those clay masks that completely dries your skin out it's really really nice and hydrating so those are my two night masks i go between depending what my skin needs i really try and customize my skincare and then if i'm not tanning another little trick i have is although the face mask is super hydrating i do like to add a couple of drops of face oil still i use a couple of drops in the morning and i use more in the evening so i'm sure about all my makeup sliding off at the end of the day when i'm sleeping if i'm tanning this i'll often use the tanner at night instead of the day so i don't have to worry about sweating it off in the sunshine here and the heat when it's 110 degrees out, then I'm really into Grande Lash right now. I like the one for the eyelashes. I don't bother with the serum for the brows. It was gifted to me. I tried it, but honestly, I'm doing the microblading anyway. It's kind of, for me, this was a bit of a miss and a bit of a saving money on the brows, unless you're really trying to grow them back um, and spend the money on the Grande Lash because it really makes a difference even on 
the underneath lower lashes I find. The only thing is it does give me bloodshot eyes in the morning. I spoke to my friend who recommended these to me and she said she doesn't have that issue. So it just might be me with my sensitive eyes, but just something to watch out for. And that is my night care routine. So if you have any questions on any of the products I've used in this or any of the tools I've used and you want kind of more in depth, I kind of just went over everything really quickly today, even though I love talking and it was quite a long video. Um, if you have any questions about anything or you want a video just on something, like if you want just a review on this, and want to know how long it takes to work, how much it costs, where to get it, everything like that, drop me a comment below. I really love hearing from you guys and getting your feedback. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below so I can get back to you.